Yes, I am. And yes, you are. We are the place where the infinite divine, the infinite mind shows up in physical and emotional and spiritual form. You and I are the opportunity for God to be something unique, live in its life in this world at this time. What I know is, and we often say it, you know, bah, yes, we often say it and now <laughs> it doesn't want to get said. Such is the nature of life that all it wants and all it asks is the opportunity to appear. You're the opportunity. So am I. Or in other words, I'm the place where God shows up. You're the place where God shows up. So as we come together today, I welcome you to a happy Easter, to a happy celebration. Whether you're celebrating a happy Easter uh, or, or a joy-filled um, Passover or a rich, wonderful, blessed Ramadan or any other religious or spiritual practice you have going on right now or that you're aware of or that's part of your life, I really want to celebrate you and honor you and say welcome. Welcome. Welcome to this celebration and welcome to this life of awareness of the divine and awareness of larger, bigger, greater expression of life than anything we have yet experienced or shared. We are a center that is welcoming to all people. We honor you, whoever you are, however you understand yourself or see yourself in designated in life, however you name yourself, whatever descriptions you have for you that are about who you are and are about how you find and name and, and place yourself in the world. We honor that because all of the great variety of life is an, are all expressions of the divine. We teach oneness here, and there's nothing that says oneness is about sameness. Oneness is about the full expression of the uni unified livingness moving through you and through each and every one of us. So welcome. We're glad you're here. If you have any thoughts or questions during or after this experience, please feel free to reach out and contact us. Now, as far as who we are and what we do, we do teach science of mind. We do teach spiritual principles based on new thought and based on oneness. We honor all spiritual paths that are within that and that follow toward that. So uh, to say more about who we believe and what we believe, <laughs> who we believe, here is the um, Declaration of Principle. I believe. I believe. I believe in one God. One absolute power and first cause to all things. I believe that this power is perfect love. And creates out of a desire to express love. I believe all thought is creative and how I choose to think creates my personal experience. I believe in the unity of all life. And the immortality of the individual soul. Forever unfolding. I believe. I believe. I believe in the eternal goodness. The eternal goodness of God. The eternal loving kindness. And the eternal givingness of God to all. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. We have folks who are part of our organization that we call practitioners. They are trained in the teachings of science and mind, in the, in the practice of new thought principles. And in their training and education, they've learned to use these principles to really transform their lives and, and also then to work with others to transform their lives. Today, we are honored to have Judy Ailey with us to share with you some thoughts and a spiritual mind treatment. Thank you, Judy. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bob. Well, we are celebrating lots of themes this Sunday, Easter, Passover, Ramadan. And something that is kind of runs through all of them is the idea of rebirth and transcendence. You know, recently I went on a trip up to North Carolina and it was <clears throat> it was still, you know, winter here. I mean, there were a little bit of things were starting to grow. And when I went up there, it was the same. But 
we came back like a week and a half later and the world had transformed. When I looked at nature and the world around me, I saw a complete transformation. The trees were green, flowers were blooming, bees and other critters were buzzing all around, birds were singing their song. Truly, it was a time of rebirth. The possibility of this rebirth is revealed to us through the world around us. It calls on us to release the old and rise up and embrace the newness that rebirth offers to us. Have you noticed that everyone is seeking something? It's that old feeling that something is missing and that we look on the outside to find whatever we think will complete us. Maybe we're looking for love or peace. Maybe it's a new job or health or prosperity or joy or the solution to a situation. Whatever it is, everyone, so it seems, is searching for something. But the truth is that we can claim the promise of rebirth from within and that the gift of life has already been given. The gifts of love, of joy, of peace, of prosperity, of health, of anything that we may be searching for, the gift of that has already been given. It is ours as we acknowledge and know that we are co-creators with the divine. Spirit only desires the very best for us, so it's up to us to know this and accept this as true for ourselves. So whatever we are looking for, whatever that thing is, we find it already within us. There's an important quote from Ernest Holmes, one of the founders of this teaching, that says, the thing that we are looking for is the thing that we are looking with. What does this mean? What are we looking with? We are looking with our eyes, our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our beliefs, our expectations, and our consciousness. So the thing that we are looking for is to be found in us as we look to see what we believe, what is in our hearts and minds. Do we believe that transformation and transcendence can be ours, just like we see it happening right now in the world around us? Do we believe that this power of life makes all things new and can work for us too? Can we team up with it? Can we release the old? We can rise up to accept the revelation of newness for ourselves. Whatever it is that we are looking for is already here. It is already found. It is already revealed. This is the truth. All right. I would like to now move to um, leading us in an affirmative prayer or a spiritual mind treatment. So if you will just get comfortable where you are, um, close your eyes if you are in a situation where that feels comfortable for you, and just allow yourself to take several nice, slow, deep breaths to allow your mind and your heart to be fully present right here in this moment right now. And please accept these words for yourself. I'm going to be saying them in the first person for myself, but please accept them for yourself as the truth. All right, we'll just turn away from anything that may be distracting, any old thoughts or ideas or what we're anticipating doing after this. And let us just bring our consciousness to be fully present right here and right now. And as I do this, I know that there is one spirit, there is one life, there is one great goodness, and that this presence, this power that we call God or spirit is everywhere present. It is through all of life that I see on the outside of me, and it is within me as well. I am completely immersed in it, totally and completely. I am immersed in this good. I am never, ever separated from it. I am immersed in it. I'm filled with it. I move through it, through all of life. And as I know my oneness with this, with this good, and I know my wholeness and my completeness 
in my goodness and my infinite spiritual perfection at the heart of who I am, as I know this, I know that all that I desire in life, all that I am looking for is already mine because I am one with this presence. I am one with this goodness. I am one with this power. So I know for my life, transformation, rebirth, newness in every way. I know newness in vibrancy of health in whatever way that I need to embrace that in my own life. I open up and know that spirit only wants the very best for me and only wants a body that moves easily, that is full of vibrancy and aliveness and energy and vitality, and that is functioning in every way down to the most minute microscopic cell or microscopic atom that is functioning in absolute perfection and harmony because this is the perfection of the universe expressing through me. I claim for myself great love for my life, great love in my life with relationships with other people, with the people that I meet, the people in my family, my partner, my friends, that I attract people that are absolutely perfect for me to express this ever-present love that is in my heart and in my mind. So I know that I attract that into my life. I know that I am living a life of fabulous opulence and abundance, that as I know that spirit is it is infinite abundant, abundance and is the absolute possibility of all things that I embrace this for myself too. I know that I bring great value to the world and that I am compensated for it, that all of my needs are easily met with great perfection, with great peace and with great ease. I just claim all of this for myself. I claim, I know that I am one with the mind of God and that with this infinite creative presence of God. And so that new ideas, new creative ways of expressing, new ways of thinking are mine. So today I claim for myself transformation. I claim for myself rebirth. I team up with the universe. I am co-creating with God in my life and I embrace every good thing. So I turn away from any idea of lack, limitation, loneliness, fear, lack of anything good, lack of money, lack of health, lack of peace. I turn away from any idea that I have situations in my life that are just unsolvable. I turn away from all of that and instead know that this presence and this power loves me, supports me, guides me, and directs me in all that I do. And so I just open myself up to this great knowing, to the expectation of fabulous living in every single way that is absolutely wonderful, that fulfills and suits me in my particular unique, perfect way. So I'm grateful for this knowing. I'm grateful for being here today. I'm grateful for CSL Midtown and for the people that are tuning in to these words this morning. So it is with great thanksgiving that I release this treatment now, knowing that it is so, and together we say, and so it is. All right. Well, let's just open ourselves up now to enjoy our next beautiful inspirational musical piece. Here we go. Thanks, everybody.
up rise up rise up rise up that's what today is all about that's what the, the celebration today is all about and what we're going to be talking about looking at within each of us reveal release and rise reveal release and rise do you know the song of the universe the dance of the universe Maybe many things, but one thing it is for sure, it's a waltz, not a foxtrot, you know, not, not a polka, not the bunny hop, but a waltz. Release and rise. It starts with recognize, release, and rise. Recognize, release, and rise. You know that a waltz can be slow or it can be very fast. And it moves almost like a polka, but it's still a waltz. The whole, the whole of consciousness seems to be made of this waltz. It's created out of it. We start with a good idea. And then we have the idea opposing it. And then we have the third, the synthesis of the two ideas that come together for yet another idea, which is probably greater than the sum of the other two. So that we're constantly doing this rise up, this, this dance of recognize, release, and rise, recognize, release, and rise. And today we're going to talk about all of those because all of that is pushed forward. It's, it's pressed into our, into our livingness and built into who we are 
by this infinite power that has created all that is, including each of us, and that still creates and moves through in and as each of us, as we live, move, and have our being within it. You all know the you all know the the, the, the feeling of having worked hard for something and for all of, for for years perhaps getting over ideas, struggling with 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 conflicts or what seem to be things working against you, and you finally get there. You have the home you always wanted. You have the the space you always wanted. The relationship you always wanted, and everything is so beautiful and wonderful until it's not. Until, you know, we just can't seem to stay there because there's something in us that is infinite and forever. And that infinite power within us is pushing for more, greater good, greater expression, greater experience. And it pushes from within to without. And and part of how that works is that as this nudge this urge this push as you finally get what you feel like it's good and right and you start celebrating that light that goodness that power then those things within you which still aren't quite as healthy and perfect and good as they could be start to show up you have greater light within yourself it shines more light and onto those shadow places and into those shadow spaces that need yet to be healed. And so then starts the next step of the dance all over again. Recognizing what needs to be healed, releasing it, allowing it to be healed, and then rising up to the next level. Life is like that. You know, it's never finished because we're never finished. No matter how long or short our lives are on this planet, they are forever on the in, in the world and in the consciousness of the universe. So this is this is Easter. We're celebrating Easter, and one of the one of the things uh, talks I often give I'm not today as much is that no, you can't have Easter without Good Friday. It makes no sense otherwise. Rising up, rising to that new life, that newness, that overcoming, hold, holding you back, overcoming whatever's holding you back wouldn't happen if there weren't some place where at some point you surrender. You surrender. You let Good Friday take it all away. And you leave behind those things that no longer serve you. Those things that may be hateful or those things that may be self-doubts and beliefs that you are anything other than the infinite power of God having an individual experience in life. So we're going to talk a little more about this dance. We say the first step, the first part of it is in recognition, recognizing the truth within you. When we recognize, Walter Starkey says it this way, and I, I, love, the, I love the quote. He says, in order to eliminate duality, we have to consciously see ourselves as being simultaneously both human and divine or divine and human. In other words, we recognize within us there's a divinity, there's a divine power of seen most clearly in our love and our loving. So that as we love, we bring to light greater truth, and then we begin to have greater joy. So there's a another that's another dance. It's the love, light, joy, love, light, joy. And and as that happens. As I said, once you shine light on something, it reveals what's there. And there may be along mixed in with that divinity, some human experiences or some some training, some experiences that are uh, less human, you might say. Experiences that are more about fear and doubt, beliefs and separation, a whole sets of beliefs and ideas that would lead us to think we we live in a world of duality that leads us to toward that idea that there are two powers a good and a bad working against each other and yet in this teaching we know we know from practice we know from study we know from uh, scientific digging into it that there can only be one power in an infinite universe if there were two it would collapse on itself and cease to be so there's only one, and, and it is in the constant revealing of the goodness of that one that 
we had these appearances of what seemed to be struggles where we seemed to be separated from life or, or separated from our good or separated from those things which would um, seem to be to our greater good. And when we recognize that, we recognize that those things that seem to be in the way, like old beliefs or intense feelings based on old belief. You know, the belief that somehow we're not good enough or the belief that you're not as, you don't measure up to what someone else has done. My world back in the day was believing that I was too big, too clumsy, for a time too fat, never too skinny, never had that one. Never had one where I thought I was not strong enough to do something. But all of those self-talk, those negative things we say to ourselves, about ourselves, those are those things that need to be released. Those are those things that by changing our belief system and releasing them, we can begin to move to the next step. Dr. Holmes says this about the release piece. He says, releasing the weight of past limiting beliefs and judgments frees us to rise up in faith, which is the mental assertion elevated to the plane of realization. Now, that's a powerful, packed statement for rising up to that or, 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 or moving, releasing the old stuff and moving into manifesting the new, releasing that idea into the creative process to allow a different experience of life. That's a very powerful part of this whole thing. See, and, and what's so important in these first two steps is that this is not a teaching about avoiding reality. It's not a teaching about pretending things are any different than they are. When you're sad, when you're depressed, when you're scared, when you're feeling all of those things that we most often prefer not to. The key to releasing them is not to pretend they don't exist. It's not to go turn on a distracting TV show and, and ignore whatever is going on in you. It's not to, to come up with some platitude or phrase to pretend that what you're experiencing isn't real. Instead, it is to settle and to allow yourself to really be present with that negative experience, that experience of limitation, while at the same time holding clearly on to the knowing that you are also divine, that there is a power within you that knows better and does better and can bring you through this. And, it's, and, that, and that power is manifested at that time in a kind of observer, that internal observer, and go, look, there's Bob being confused and goofy again. Can't get his words to come out this morning at times. Isn't that interesting? Now, I can pretend that doesn't happen and they're not real, and I can just avoid it in every, every way, shape, and form. However, if I want to transform it, then I really look at it. Ernest Holmes says in the textbook, we, you know, the purpose of this teaching, one of the one of the most important parts of it is to be able to look at any discordant fact in, and know better. We don't pretend they're not there. We look at them squarely until we see through them to a better idea, to a greater knowing, to a deeper sense. But it requires being fully present with who we are. See, because then as, as you just saw on the screen, we have the ability to rise above it all. We have the ability to transcend, not rise as in pretend it's not there, but transcend it, previous experiences, and rise triumphant above them. But we shall never triumph over them while we persist in going through the old mental reactions. In other words, if the old reaction is still there, the mental equivalent, the mental belief is probably still there. But when they're done and they're not there anymore and you have transcended them, the old mental reactions just won't show up. The emotional reactions won't show up. I went through a period of time in my life some years ago where I was keenly aware of how much 
um, the belief and the idea and the feeling of victimization had been up front for me based on, on earlier experiences and in the beliefs that I formed out of those experiences. And <clears throat> during that period, it was very um, not smart to walk up behind me and startle me because my physio physiology and my mind would react just like that. In a, in a very powerful and negative way. And, and it wasn't until I kept looking at that and what it be, means and what I believed until my idea, my greater idea that, that there's a God and a power and a light within me that is brighter and stronger than any previous victimization experience might be, that that power has the power to tri triumph and over override any kind of negative experience of victimhood. Once that began to take root by my constantly working with myself and my consciousness and my emotions and my feelings and my beliefs primarily, I began to rise out of that. And those reactions that I used to have aren't there anymore. It just doesn't happen anymore. And that's a delightful, wonderful thing. And if you have things in your past that have and triggered these negative heavy reactions about one thing or another where perhaps you were hurt or victimized or or did something where you feel guilty and ashamed you know one of the dances that is not a pleasant dance is that blame shame regret blame shame regret and we go through that over and over again and usually the person we're blaming the most is ourselves even if we project it out there on someone else we're still blaming us but through the power of this teaching, through the power of love, the power of life, we rise above all of that. We rise beyond it and we don't pretend it's not there. We transform it. So it's it really isn't an issue for us anymore. We find forgiveness. We find forgiveness for ourselves. That's one of the great practices of rising above is that we, we fully... We fully forgive ourselves and others. It's a practice. It's a beautiful, beautiful practice. It doesn't say what happened to me is okay and it should be happening all the time. It just says it doesn't matter anymore. It no longer impact, impacts or prevents or supports me from living in the moment, in the joy and the presence of life. You know, we rise in truth. We rise in love. There's a great old, old gospel song. Love lifts, lifts me up. Lifts, lifts. I can't say it. Like I said, sometimes the words don't come. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Love lifts me up where we belong. It's a great song. And it's based, not directly, but it's in the same idea world as what Emma Curtis Hopkins said. And that is that truth lifts us up where we belong. Because we belong in that higher consciousness. We belong in that world of recognition that love is all there is. That there's a unified oneness that moves through everyone. And that the power of life in me is the same power of life in you. Therefore, I love and honor and respect you, whoever you are, whatever you think. Yeah. I mean, that's where this, that's where this hits, the, hits the road, where the rubber hits the road. Is when we start to look at how do I rise above? I rise above by loving. By loving, by loving. Hmm. So that we begin to choose and think as we choose about choose creating the kind of life we want. We choose a life and create a life because of our belief systems and because of our choices. And because the universe is always saying yes to whatever we're choosing. We choose a life in which we experience more love. We experience more truth. One of my great desires from early childhood was to see, know, and experience as much of this world as I possibly could while I'm here. 
So for me, a, a great spiritual experience is simply deeply listening to, recognizing, and feeling that new thing that may be coming into my life, whatever it is. A new route to work I haven't driven before. Some new flowers blooming somewhere. A new building going up. Whatever the newness is, to me, is like a, 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 a demonstration, an outward expression of the creative power of, of the world and creative power of humanity, the creative power that we all share and participate in. That's a pretty awesome view of life whenever you can live in that space and see it all the time. Hmm. Emerson said that one of the great ways to experience an expanded life, to get past our fears of taking risks and stepping out, is if you have a, an idea of good, good for you, good for others, hurting no one, and you're afraid of it, afraid to do it because of the risk, do it anyway. If you're afraid of it, do it anyway, because that will end the fear more than anything else. <clears throat> Standing back and trying to talk yourself out of it doesn't do it. But do it anyway. Write a new story. Write a new story about yourself from a perspective <clears throat> of self-love, self-care, and then self-expression for that which you would give to the world and create in the world as, as your highest and best idea. Take time sometime this week to write it out or at least to make notes about what it might look like and who you might be and how you might live. If you are coming from a place of self-love and care, because you can't do that without also loving others. Love is a whole piece. Hmm. You know, we are spiraling through space. And it is, it is incredible the speeds at which your body is moving right now in terms of spinning around the planet that's spinning around a solar system or, or a sun that's spinning through a solar system that's spinning through a universe. And when you look at how all of that is happening at once, it turns into a great spiral that you are personally involved with. So I invite you to consciously join the waltz with the divine within you, to waltz and dance with that divine within you. And as you do, you are spiraling into greater living, higher truth, and constantly expanding good for yourself and the world around you. And as you do this, you bring greater good to you, to the world, to all of us. Because you are wonderful. And so am I. And so it is. So I invite you now to hear from one of our board members, our video guy extraordinaire who makes this broadcast happen every week. And uh, I give you Vance Blue. Go Vance. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Today on this great, beautiful, beautiful day out here in Atlanta. Um, so for me, for this day, for all of us, I'm grateful for this teaching, for everything that I've learned over time and continue to learn every week, every Sunday, there's something new that comes in. And with that, I'd like you to consider donating and possibly donating on an every week basis. Um, cslmidtown.org slash donate. You can scan the QR code. And if you would say with me, our affirmation of prosperity, I live in a universe of abundance. As I freely and joyfully give, I join in the divine flow and all that I share with life returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Have an awesome week. Now on to announcements. And it's time for everybody's favorite fun game. Announcements, announcements, announcements. 
Hey, stay in touch with the Center for Spiritual Living Midtown through our newsletter. Get one email a week, letting you stay informed. And please subscribe when visiting YouTube to our YouTube channel. Those subscriptions go a long, long way. And while you're on your social media, why not give us a like and a share on Facebook? Let your friends know what we're doing. Invite them to come watch our services with you. And join us on our Zoom room throughout the week. We offer a variety of Zoom interaction opportunities each and every week here as part of the Center for Spiritual Living Midtown. 10 a.m. Sunday is our discussion group around the 365 Science of Mind book. Every Sunday, 12 noon Sundays, our community fellowship immediately following our Sunday services. And 12 noon on Tuesday, our online empowerment opportunity. The access room information remains the same for all of our Zoom experiences. If you need access, please visit cslmidtown.org and you'll find access information on our website. Join us on any of our Zoom opportunities throughout the week. And while you're with us, be sure to connect with one of our professional practitioners. These are folks that are highly trained to support you along your spiritual journey. You can learn more on our website about our professional practitioners. Just head over to cslmidtown.org, click on About and Practitioners. Then you'll see their bios and a way to reach them and learn a little bit more about each of them. And please send us your prayer requests. Click on the Home tab and look for Affirmative Treatment Prayer Requests. Let's fill out the form. Send it off and get our professional practitioners praying for you each and every day. All right. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Judy, for that wonderful treatment earlier, Vance, for all that you do and for your announcements regarding prosperity. I would just add to it that the CSL Midtown is expanding. We have now been an online ministry for about two, well, for two years plus a, a month. And we have done well with that. We have expanded. We have not spent money on a building and that has saved some money and that allowed us to put something aside. Going forward now, we are also going to be offering in-person uh, Sundays Starting the 1st of May, we'll do the 1st and 3rd of May, or 1st and 3rd Sundays of May, let me be clear, and uh, we'll begin to be in a building. If you would like to support that effort and add to what was already being contributed and done, then I invite you to consider it. I also invite you, if you're in the Atlanta area, to please join us on the 1st of May. We start May Day off with a new, a new theme and a new experience there. We do not cut back in any way on our online work. This will still be broadcast and there will still be our Zoom gathering that goes on at the same time and allows you to participate wherever you are in whatever country, whatever part of the world. We have people from all over the world joining in with us at different times. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for all that you've given to this organization and this opportunity for us to share our beliefs and our truth with the world. So join me, if you will, in our closing affirmation of life. I leave this place now knowing something better than I knew before. I go forth into the world with a heart full of love and a mind full of good sense. I look at the world in a greater way, knowing that I have within me everything I need to create the life I desire. I give thanks for this understanding. And I am grateful for the spirit of life that lives through me. And so it is. See you next week.